One of my boys asked me a good question. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me throw it to you. Uh, well, well, first off, we don't propose in Saudi. No, we don't. We no. don't. Mm -hmm. It's not part of our culture. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, some dudes do it because, you know, they're just... How, okay, I don't, don't want to talk shit about people uh, getting married. I love that people are getting married. Because they're... they're um, Fatherless? Open to Yo. <laughs> Yo. Open, Welcome back, by the way. Open, open, good, open to inspiration. Oh, mm. Mm. So he was like, hey, I'm going to propose to my girlfriend, so I'm, I need a track, right? Oh, bad. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like, no one ever asked me for that. Like, Did, yo, I'm looking for a track. Is this boombox ready? I have no idea what's <laughs> no, going on. Okay. So, like, I couldn't, like, uh, like off the top of my head, I just couldn't think of anything. Okay? She take my money. <laughs> okay, no. So, actually, a good question. Like, you know, what would be if you guys propose? Mm. If, let's say, mm. we were in that world where you get down on one knee like an idiot mm. and you propose, mm. right? Um, what would be the track playing in the background? Wow, that is something I have literally never thought. See what about. I mean? Yeah, See literally. exactly. I have absolutely no idea. Um, Master of Puppets by Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Nani, that's that's not where I would go. Why? A... Master of Puppets. What does that exactly say? <laughs> I mean, it's open to interpretation, yeah, Shams. Mm. That's kind of the Expl point. Explain to me your interpretation. Well, this, this, Who is the puppet in this your... This is going to be terrible. I'm feeling like mm. a virgin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to be copyrighted. Like a virgin mm -hmm. <laughs> for Turks. That's a good one. I think uh, perfect for mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. um, for you... <laughs> uh, hello, you've thought about this. It mm. seems you have options. I couldn't answer him, mm. right? But I was like, when it comes to my boys, mm. I will find... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're perfect yeah. first off like for number one I don't even need to play anything because for number one I know exactly what it's going to be silence no uh, cries yeah. <laughs> okay. you know mm -hmm. that's what it's going to be that, that applies a uh hot -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. and she exactly yeah. see that's what's going to be for you but for you Shamsi mm. <laughs> it's going to be oh, wow sandstorm yes. a bit a bit honestly or OG track, <laughs> OG, OG track, track, honestly. So many memories there. <laughs> just, just blasting in the background yeah. while you proposed. Yeah. We've been here together for so long. We've been through ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the idea here is to get her excited about this new life that we're building, right? So, it's going to be a sandstorm. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, sandstorms are good. You know why I did? Yeah, why? Because after they're done, you know, there's, there's a new beginning. Um, Damn, that doesn't say good. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, honestly, yeah. yeah we, a new beginning. Uh, yeah, does that mean a second marriage? <laughs> we, start, we start with dirt in your mouth. <laughs> no, we start with um, divorce. Exactly. Not, mm. not divorce. Uh, challenges, you know, um, obstacles. But see, anyway, this is this is part of the journey. We make it through together. This is why we're going through the sandstorm. <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense? Marketing like, started perfectly. to sell. A gear started to work in my head. If I do it, I just want people to understand. This, I, is, <laughs> this is what he's selling right now. Okay, <laughs> this is what he's selling. <laughs> I'm trying to spin. I'm he's selling this. Okay. I'm trying to, yes, this is, what <laughs> this is, is this? You selling. know, this, you know what it is. This is life. You're about doing. This is not life right there. This is how life started. <laughs> this is how you know you're alive. You taste the sand. <laughs> <laughs> on your lips, you know. Hey, welcome back. Welcome to your boy. I had the what's was popping episode 273. Got the homie Shams right next to me. Yo. Number one is back. This is so stupid. Unfortunately. <laughs> thank, thank you. Welcome back then. I should really stop trying to sell everything. <laughs> I feel like... Yeah. You got... Isn't that life? I'm way too hard to work in this marketing shit, bro. <laughs> because it's the start of our life. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stupid, yo. Oh my How God. do you know what babies heard when they came out <laughs> their, their mother's wombs? <laughs> Maybe that was the vibe, you know. Yo. Maybe that's why they were crying, you know. <laughs> I guess, bro. I guess if you say so. Oh, uh, uh, what's happening, boys? Turks is not here. Uh, I don't know why. I need to explain to you. He's under the couch somewhere. <laughs> you know, he's he's gonna pop out somewhere. He's hiding. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about? There's actually like a bunch of topics that have, like, you know, I. I put words here. Okay, mm. we can make it into topics yeah. if we have something. For okay, it. Mm. let's. I love words, but I do. <laughs> let's start. With, <laughs> let's start with uh, the nicest like, word. I do not know. Like, where do I want to start? Paint well, me a picture. I, I can't paint no picture for you, son. Uh, give me First a, off, welcome back. Good to be back. How's uh, we don't care, travels? Adil. We don't mm. care. Uh, yeah, let's act like we pretend. Do. How's your traveling? Okay. Right. All right. This is. Uh, thank you. Can you tell us more about? No. You, no. You know, no. Not a plan. No. 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 Once again, we don't care. Exactly. Yeah. So, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad that you're back, I guess. 
I went to Pilates. Okay, now we're waiting on that one. So go ahead. No, I didn't. Okay, all right. See, oh, you know, you're escaping. Did you do Pilates or not? No, but uh, I booked a hotel that was over Pilates studio for some reason. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I accidentally ch- went into a class m- when I was trying to find the lobby when I first <laughs> came in. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this, are, are you sure this is the hotel? <laughs> the Google Maps says this is the right place. I'm like... Were you attracted by, you know, all Pilates? the... All the- Hulking up, that was happening. Apparently, it's good for your core. That was what? Excuse me. What was it called? Hulking up. Hulking up. Hulking up. Bulking, you mean? Bulking up. Okay, no one bulks up Pilates. Imagine what they do. What do they do at Pilates? (laughs) It's an extreme yoga. Yes. It's an extreme yoga. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So, I. A lot of core strength was on display at Shamsi. Mm. Mm. Things that none of us here have. Yeah, that I can testify to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Preach! I, yeah, preach. <laughs> That's something we could preach to. Anyway, so you did nothing. Well, thank so. you for sharing, number one, the, the non-experience that you had. It was an experience for me. It's, uh, put things into perspective. How was how is, how is wow. your uh, day going, Adel? Mm. Mm. You want to talk about Sandala? What do you want to talk about? Tell me. Uh, I, like, uh, I didn't go there. No one can see my eyes. Mm. So... <laughs> Like uh, there was, I think, a soft opening for mm-hmm. Sandara. Uh, beautiful yachts, beautiful weather. Oh, perfect time because the weather just got really, really good. So we just got into the cold weather. Yes, moment. like temperatures of the yacht have been beautiful lately. Mm-hmm. We've been shivering at night. We're not yet shivering, but we were getting our uh, light jackets out. No, yeah, light night. Late yeah. night is cold. Yeah, late, late night is really light cold. Light jackets are Especially working. if you're outside. But from what I saw, beautiful gathering, uh, great opening, little soft opening, I think it was. I don't think it's the official opening. Mm-hmm. But looks beautiful. Um, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> look, There's nothing else I can add to that. Looking forward to seeing more, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's going to be very active once other things finish up in Neo. Mm-hmm. Right? So, because this is like one small destination in the bigger picture of Neo. So, this is going to be the first official, you think? Part yeah, of this, is, to, yeah, this to, is one. This is, the one. Mm-hmm. this is the first one. Because the Red Sea, we just finished it up. And Red Sea, this had nothing to do with Neo. But Sandala does. So, uh, yeah, congrats to everybody that was there. Congrats to everybody that worked on the project. Wish you all the best. Looking forward to more. Looking forward indeed. And uh, all I can say is if you don't have a yacht, mm. you can golf. You can golf. You can golf. Okay, so you have options there. And if you want to shop, you can shop. Okay, that's three. <laughs> I'm guessing the C is four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the C is four. And the building design, architecture is five. Mm, architecture. Mm, scenery. No, but see, you're looking at the first flowering of the Neon Project. You're yes. going to have a lot of stuff going on there. You're going to have mountain resort. You're going to have skiing. You're going to have, you know, cities on the water. So it's nice to see it actually come to life. Yes, day one, still. Mm. Like, we can't judge on day one. Day zero. Maybe day zero since I think it's even day zero. Yeah, yeah, I think it's even day zero. Even if it's day one, you can't even judge. I think we'll be able to judge once everything starts being activated and the region calms down, mm-hmm. where people can actually travel freely around here. Well, people can, but still, like every day, there's a flight de- delay or cancellation. Mm-hmm. So until all that calms down, which we hope is soon, we'll discuss Saeed and Iran's bullshit show. But we'll come back to that one at the end. I don't care about talk about it in the beginning. Give us good things to talk about. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about something that really is dear to my heart. And it hurts me that I have to bring up the subject to this podcast. Mm. Like I thought that it's something that I could heal from Mm -hmm. and move forward in my life. Mm. But like over and over again, I find myself going backward and falling into the same thing and crying my heart out. Baldness? No, sir. <laughs> it's not baldness. Okay, I, I feel like that's one thing he's accepted in his life. You know, there's a lot of things he's accepted, I mean, but I think that's like I, a. It felt like it's a formation, formational time in your you life. You can never be honest on this podcast with anyone here. You can't even put your heart out. You can't do nothing here. I did, this was called projecting. You know, mm. this is called projecting. He can, look. He should not be talking. Okay, first off, your head is the size of sandala. Okay, mm-hmm. we can park yachts around your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's anyway, one. Anyway, I was just giving love back. Mm. It was something really dear to my heart. <laughs> Which is? Which is love is blind. Mm. Love is blind is dear to your heart? Or love generally is dear to your heart? No, you dumbass. The show. <laughs> ah, the show. Okay. Yes. And the reason is every time I see the show, it hurts me when I know that Shamsi said no to them. Because I yes. cannot believe. I, I was I was just about For to the say. friendship of 14 years that we had. Friendship. Okay, uh, yeah, mm. it's a stretch. I know. Yeah, I know. It's a yeah, stretch. Yes, but, but the friendship for fourteen years that we had, and all the loyalty, companionship, and the companionship <laughs> yes. that we had, and I expected my friend to accept. And and on the podcast, I did offer him a G sixty three AMG. Turks offered him an apartment, 
Basically, we got you ready for there, your marriage. There, there were yes. numbers thrown around. I there believe. was numbers being thrown around. Sultan yeah. Gelag. Mm-hmm. Gelag offered also. He said, name your price. Yeah, they literally said, name your price. Yeah, but see, see, that's the thing. I did. Love is Blind. priceless. <laughs> right? It's <laughs> <laughs> priceless. Can't put a price on love. How is how is so love is blind? Tell me more about what you encountered. No, every time I watch it, like a tear drops down my eye. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask you a question. I've heard about love is blind, but mm-hmm. what is the actual concept of the show? I see it in my algorithm. I would have really understood it if Shams was on the show, but since <laughs> Shams is on the show, I'm he not would really, he would have really, really paid attention. <laughs> I don't care. From what I gathered, okay. <laughs> <laughs> from what I gathered, see you what know, you missed. Yeah, <laughs> see what you missed. The premise here. Is they get a collection of eligible bachelors, mm-hmm. uh, and they and they group them with a group of a uh, bachelorettes. Bachelorettes, indeed. Yet the twist is that they are separated from actually seeing each other. Hence the blind part. Mm. Uh, so Arab. Uh, yeah, I mean, in this case, I don't want to say it, but it is dating back in two thousand five. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's that's what love is blind. Is. Not even two thousand five. Like, since even longer. Since even longer. Yeah. yeah. Since the eighties. Yeah. Since the eighties. Yeah. Literally. But now. There's a TV camera in your face, Adil, and you get to talk to the world about it and tell them how you feel about everybody you spoke to. And that's the whole idea. You talk to other people and you build connections and then eventually they pair you up. Mm-hmm. And they try to get you married, which is, uh, yeah. So, so <laughs> Just fun. I'm guessing it's fun. So do you run the risk of connecting with an uggo? Mm-hmm. I mean, that is one of the possible outcomes, I believe. I, I love his You're talking about personality here, right? No, and I mean, an ugly as in a person who's ugly. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying okay. to save this man. He doesn't need to save this no, man. Uh, subtly be damned. <laughs> we see that's that's when you're loving, that's that's when you're understanding love. I mean, incorrectly. Look, I saw one. the competition. Okay, right? love is truly blind. In terms right? of the competition, when it comes to men, champs will eat them alive. Like, I know my boy. Well, thank you, sir. He yeah. would eat them alive. Right, mm. and that's what it hurts because this could have been the like the the only love is blind where one guy has all the girls. Can enough take Well, there needs to be competition. Uh, the... Well, that's the thing. Maybe that's why they didn't accept yeah, it. They're exactly. like, yo, this this man is too strong. Okay, let, let's remind you. Let, <laughs> let us strong. remind you of the Twitter events here. The Twitter events was was not them not accepting me. Adel. It was my <laughs> never replying to their messages because mm. you knew you were too strong. I <laughs> did, Adel. I did, and I wanted to give everybody everybody else a chance. But like, hindsight, like you want this to be entertaining television, right? It will be entertaining. No, no, it's not entertaining. <laughs> no, no, when it it's will be entertaining. Done for me. in two episodes, you know. No, it's not yeah. gonna be done in two episodes. Imagine, Especially you imagine did. the cameo of Adel. Coming to that show. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. No, no, I am imagine, imagine the publicity for the podcast. Hey, exactly. I'm Shamsi. I'm here for Find Love. Also, listen to my podcast. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, you can find me on Past the Cups of Podcast. You do that for free. This on. Every We're just day. talking shit to you the whole time. <laughs> I mean, I feel like <laughs> that would have been an opportunity that you would have enjoyed. I'm not sure that yes. experience would have been as Look, nice all of me. this is for my enjoyment. Mm. I don't care about how you feel in this whole situation. No, you're supposed to care about me finding love. No, even isn't, if you get heartbroken this, is, and you come a, back, no, no. I'll be like, oh, thank you for the entertainment. Okay, I'm not going to lose at a game game where people are blind okay <laughs> people are not blind <laughs> you're just i'm just saying bro like <laughs> like if i'm going there I did, i'm winning something you know so Yo, don't man. let my competitive spirit come alive you're an please. idiot <laughs> I'm just saying. you're an idiot no nah, man you should have done that show the show's trash but you should have done the show i mean is it good tv no is, it's not no, it's isn't, isn't, isn't all reality television trash by design yeah but this one is like thrown at us this is trying to cater to our audience. But yeah, any- do you remember Dubai is Bling or something like that? Dubai, Dubai Bling, Bling, yes. Yes, or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. Right? That was trash, trash. Right? I, I mean, that was like sometimes one trash. Sometimes you want junk food. All right, cool. Then this one is the junk food for you. Where uh, The funniest thing about this whole Love is a Blind, what was it, what was it called? Love is Blind Habibi or some shit? Habibi. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because that's... Saidin al Joe. Yeah, Saidin al Joe. So basically you're saying Habibi is blind Habibi. Okay, okay. That, well, fine, uh, yeah. I guess. I guess. Habibi is just a tack on to, I know. to yeah. But it's anyway. Like, oh, this is the flavor of the season. For all you minas. I, I've been watching uh, all over Twitter, all the people who watch like the whole Love is Blind, every single version of it. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about this version. They talk about, oh, look how Arab men, how they speak. Right? So for example, it's like, oh, uh, how are you today? Wallah, Yuni, I was fine. You know, like, oh, say, oh, my eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, look how they speak. Like they don't know, like this is like normal conversations. This is but the, language, the language, like most of it is even lies. Oh yeah, you need. I'm letting, you're not reading my eyes. <laughs> but see, but see, they, 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 I'm just being kind here. And, and to note, note that they picked the most generic Arabic love word, Habibi. The exactly. One, the, the one that you say to literally, Hagel Bakala, Shukran Habibi. When like literally, it's a, it's an everyday word that you use everywhere you go. So. I said it to Fawal this morning. <laughs> <laughs> see, there we go. Do you know why? Because you love that fool, don't you? Exactly. Us Arabs, we have a lot of. 
affection to give out yani, everywhere we go, I think. So that, that plays a role there as well. It was all thing was trash. They made a big deal about this guy who was talking to this girl, this one dude. I don't know who it is. And I don't know who he's talking you to. You sound invested, yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no. This is all on Twitter. Truth. Right? I did cares about people finding love. Of course. I can tell you that much. Uh, number one thing when I wake up. Oh, mm-hmm. who needs love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how can I provide? Yeah, even like when I'm like, I need to shower real quick and get out of here. Love needs to be found. <laughs> why, why do you think he was so excited? <laughs> love <about> needs sight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why do you think he was so excited about me joining the show? You know, I, the, I wanted to find know, love. Exactly. You know, he knows how love was avoiding me this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <idiot. laughs> yeah. So this dude was like, she was like, oh, I'm a dancer or something, and he was like, no, I'm not gonna accept it. My family's not gonna accept it. You know, I don't want my wife to be a dancer. You can be, you can be in any type of arts that you want, but you know, dancing is not one of them. Mm. And everyone, of course, in the West, like, ah, close-minded. Ah, la 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 la. She has the right to do whatever he want. And then someone, Jay, asked me like, yo. If you were in that position, what would you say? I was like, knowing our entertainment industry, no way in fucking hell. No, yeah, there's there's certain things that I think society still finds not weird, but yeah, any different, you know, and not everyone's gonna be accepting of it. The Arabic music industry and movie industry is disgusting. True. We're not gonna lie. We know people in the behind the scenes, we hear the stories, we know what's going on. A very big famous Saudi actor was actually on TV last year saying, I won't even accept my daughter doing uh, TV. But saying again, that again, that also applies to the, to both the movie, movie and music industry in different places. It's not just here in their world. I don't care about I, I, different no, it's, places. It's I diff- care about what we're doing. No, no, I, I agree, but you know, it's a general phenomenon. I was it's not say. because it's disgusting somewhere else, it should be disgusting here. Not at all. Yeah, you know? So when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, th- that. That whole industry has a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that is very disgusting. And anyone can fall to it. I don't want to take that risk on me and my family. True. So like I, mm. I understand his point of view, but you have these like non-Arabs that are watching for the first time not getting what's his point of view. Because the guy said no, he didn't say no, I don't want you to do any art. He's like, yeah, Yo, you can do any art you want. But there's a certain thing that I'm not going to be comfortable with. Exactly. Yo, right? not, Which not... I thought it was very fair for him to say that. And it was very fair for her to say, yo, no, I don't like that. Peace out. Mm. I want to do what I want to do. But like people just try to make a big deal out of nothing. A nothing burger. Well, basically, that's that's what you're looking for when you're looking for your TV show. Fake outrage, fake, you know, scandals, fake, I don't know. It's The whole thing feels fake, isn't it? Like, that's the whole thing is trash. Yeah, exactly. I was, I'm looking forward to see some real... Like properly inspired reality TV shows that come out. There, of, there is no such thing. No, You're no. thinking of documentaries, HMC. Any, any, actually, yeah, I'm thinking of documentaries. Yeah, reality TV is not. It's almost always scripted by design. Mm. It's like, oh, you called her a bad thing. Okay, we've been catching on camera. Like, okay, let's rewind back and do it again. Let's let's create some drama. Exactly. If the opportunity shows itself again, would you say yes? It has. I said no. <laughs> like, why okay. do you why do you kill my dog? <clears throat> okay, hold on. What is it? They did reach out to me for the second season. <laughs> Thank you. Again. What can we offer uh, you to get a yes out of you? What would possibly be something that we can do that will make you say yes? How many zeros? I mean, I, I feel like a guarantee that I will actually find love if I go seeking it and for it in that show would be would be reassuring. First off, I don't the, want to waste my time, bro. Nothing in life is a guarantee. Mm, see, there we go. Mm. Mm. So that's why yeah. you have to be vulnerable. Even what I'm about to guarantee you might not be guaranteed <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of you yeah. saying yes. Yeah, you do realize whatever y'all offer me, I will need an ironclad contract for that shit, you know, before I... Fine. Yeah. What is something that we can offer in you... triplicate. <laughs> ...to make you say yes? An island, maybe. That's that's even cheaper than what I had in mind. Really? What was, would you have yes, in mind? Yes, you know, islands are very cheap. A really good one. I, I, that's a really good with, one. With plumbing. <laughs> no, no, first off, plumbing. <laughs> okay. You idiot. Okay, it's not plumbing. First off, what island has plumbing? I don't know. There's some islands that don't. <laughs> no island has plumbing. <laughs> it's in the sea. It's an island. <laughs> it's in the sea. <laughs> you idiot. I don't know, bro. I just need things to be hygienic over there. I'm not digging holes. <laughs> no, Oh, man, well, crazy. I ain't digging holes. All right, fine. I'll get you what, 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 plumbing. What, what did you have in mind? Any, you know, offer entice me. Adel. No, because you know the islands are very cheap. There's a lot of islands you can get for like two hundred thousand dollars. I want like a, a big one. First off, you can't even. Can, what what is big to it you? It has a castle. Okay, well, to my knee, like bad. Any, you know, like something. I don't know. Get get those like two Indian guys on YouTube to build him something. <laughs> <laughs> fine, a castle. Fine. On an island. On an island. Yeah. With, with plumbing. Fuck you with plumbing. 
<laughs> and the way to get and and you know to get and leave the island. You know? a, a canoe. <laughs> yeah, it's not a canoe. That's not, that's not, that's, I'm gonna get you a canoe. That's not, that's not a you know good way to access an island. You yeah. know, you could just ask for the money rather than asking for the item. No, I'm just thinking some some lifestyle choices, Adam. I mean, I want, this, I'm not going to get you something that you're not going to go this, to. This is an elevated version of the kuch. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm thinking here. You know? Okay, fine. Fine. I, I just want to see what, what you would actually offer. I would me. actually fucking offer so much. Yeah. You have no idea. Okay. I'm willing to lose money. Mm. I mean, obviously you are. Yes. Mm. When it comes to this. Let's, let's keep in to mind. Have let's it, keep in mind. This is all just to ensure that i find love so this is this is such a genuine because i imagine showing the footage to your grandkids <laughs> this is what i imagine Chamsi. okay like yo this is your great grandfather <laughs> do you want to show him to go for yes. love i mean look at how he put himself out there you know I, I, he was a lover not a fighter <laughs> exactly look at how he stepped off the ledge on tv <laughs> he did anything you know? for love um, yeah. i i imagine myself like 30 years from now i'm, I'm like Gather around little Shamsi links. <laughs> Shamsi links. Let us tell you about the story of your origin. Show what you have done. Give I think this is. I think this is how super villains are created. By the way, like, yeah, still, like yo, look how needy my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, that no one want. He went on a show to get love, and I mean, he still look, couldn't find. I mean, it. look at him. He's trauma dumping from episode one. <laughs> Well, he saw the trauma jump before he was taught there. Obviously, like, you know, y'all need to know my truth. Uh, why else am I here? Well, speaking of your truth, <laughs> look, you can say, yo, Adel, I want this. Let me watch it. Let me, let me watch oh, it. Let me watch God. it. Let me see. Let me see what's going on, actually, just for me to have an idea. All right. Fine. Mm. Fine. Mm. I'll go off something else. Let's go. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said something very interesting, and then everybody got really angry at him because of what he said about Elon Musk. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the spaceman. Yes, the spaceman. Okay, the astrophysicist. Yes, the black science man. Yes, the black science man. Supposedly one of the smartest people. Supposedly on the media. So he criticized the whole SpaceX rocket going back and forth. Okay, because he understands rockets. Because he understands space. Okay. But what he criticized something is like when he said it, I did realize that yo, like we were really overhyping something. Mm -hmm. He was like everything minus. The return of rockets has already been done by NASA mm. since the 60s. NASA actually went somewhere further in the space frontier than what SpaceX has done so far. So I'm not really excited about a rocket going back and coming and coming because it's not adding anything to space exploration. I mean, it's making the whole process a lot more cost effective, isn't it? Yes. Which is which helps in 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 pursuing more space endeavors right mm -hmm. so why would there be space endeavors and and he actually made a very very good point less by the way. less space waste no. as well he was like things that change in the world happens because of geopolitics it does not happen for the sake of nothing it does happen sometimes because of natural events let's stick to space for a second right now okay right so why did the u.s invest so much money to go to space because it wanted to put one up over the Soviet Union. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was a competition and geopolitics played a role for them to put that money down and lose money and take higher risks. Yes. So the primary driver of it was political and it ended up with a lot of technological, you know, positive benefits. So when he was talking about, okay, you're saying that you want to go to Mars, right? You are not going to put up that money to go to Mars because the shareholders are not going to allow you to put up the money. We were talking about SpaceX, SpaceX here, okay. right? Because in the private sector, it's all about ROI, adding my money back, which mm. is 100%, mm. right? If you want to invest something, we want to know how much is the risk and how much is the return. Okay. Governments do not need to worry about they the risk. They don't use the same calculus. Exactly. They, they, they literally print money. No, no, they, 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 don't, they don't care about making a profit when you, there's an overarching aim, you know, war being one of them. And in this case, I mentioned war because there was the Cold War going on and that was the primary, you know, driver there. And everything that when governments pour the money into it, what happens later on? To sustain it, they give away the things that will cut costs to the private sector for them to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Because it would be cheaper for them to just purchase or rent or do whatever rather than have to keep building it every single time and lose money on it. Which is why we have weapons manufacturers basically exactly. that live off government contracts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you have space exploration, NASA can say, we want to go to Jupiter if we want to. And they can do it because they'll do a study why they want to go there. And then the U.S. government will take the risk of putting 
you know, tax dollars toward that program. But there's a very big difference between the government allocating money for scientific endeavors. Exactly. And between the government allocating money because, ooh, we will not exist if we lose this game. Exactly. Which is, you know, the war example. So when he said that, like, people got really angry, like, oh, you're just a hater. What he did is incredible. Whatever. He's like, yeah, no, what he did was great. I'm, I have no problem. I think he's a smart man. I think what he did was amazing. Mm -hmm. But it did nothing for space. I think... I think the biggest appeal of SpaceX when it comes to the innovations it has done is the only viable, commercially successful company that has, you know, been able to sustain a space business. And that's what they're doing at this point. You know, no, no other company has done that. What is their product? Taking people to space. Have they took people to space? Yeah, they're working on the products. Yeah, yeah, they have. A lot of, have they not? Yes, they sent people on the rockets. Yeah, exactly. So so that's, instead of me, the US government, having to build these inefficient vehicles that, that are based on technologies from the 60s and 70s, I have a guy who's willing to put money down to streamline the entire process. And yes, effectively <clears throat> take this 60, 70 year old technology and make it leaner, make it easier and more commercially viable to do. That's basically what it's done. And that I think is worth something. And I don't think that, you know, that entire thing is not easy to do. So yes, in terms of, let's say, giant jumps forward in technology, maybe not, but in terms of being able to do things more efficiently, definitely yes. In terms of, the, the only thing that they have to, as a product is taking a rocket to go back and forth. Mm. Without SpaceX, the US would be so behind China right now in terms of actual astronauts. Because they were and, cutting funds to And NASA. space trips and all of that. And yeah, that's like that's one of the things that why SpaceX is also hyped up, I would say, because they are playing that role of being the US. Uh, I think it's because it's a space, private sector company you know, that's going into space. But everything that, every driver. time they go into space, it's not like they're going out of their own pocket. They're being paid a lot of, of money, Of course, they get, they're getting paid to do what they do. They're getting paid for the R&D. They're getting paid for everything. So it's not like, hey, NASA exists, we exist, we're going to do our own thing, do our own studies, why you guys do it? No, no, no. It's like, yo, I'm just literally a contractor to you. And at this point, you don't see them building a moon base on, on Mars, for example. I don't Who, think Who's building a moon base? I'm saying, I'm saying when you get to that point of saying, hey, NASA wants to build, or the US wants to build a moon base. Okay. Who will be able to actually do that for me? Would, would, would I go and start from scratch and build my own machines with NASA? Would, would I use existing technology from SpaceX to really cut the cost? No, you, cut the... you allowed SpaceX to exist in order for you to take one thing off your plate and make that money go somewhere else. Mm. So you save yourself money by doing that. So you're always going to use SpaceX to go to anywhere in space, right? Even to the space station. Mm. So that's not, again, that's what he's saying. He's like, all of that is now wow. That was things that NASA used to do. just gave it someone else to do. Fair. That's, that is a fair criticism, that, yes. But what I'm saying, exactly. that is important. It's not wow, yes, but it is important. That's, that's, that's Again, what I'm saying. it's something that already happened, already existed. Mm. It's not something it's brand not new. It's innovative. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So basically, he just took one load off of NASA, and he's just handing it for them. But it's not the equipment that that deals with space exploration, mm. right? It's not the equipment. Like all the rovers that they built at NASA and all the things to, to I think it was the rover that went the, to the Mars. Mars. Yeah. There's a couple of ones. And the other ones that were in space, just, you know, circulating planets and stuff like that. None of that was done by SpaceX. That's all still NASA. Mm. So he's like, when he's saying, in terms of being in the forefront of space exploration, SpaceX is nowhere in the building. Mm. They're still outside the building. All that is still NASA. And people got really angry because he's saying, oh, you're devaluing the value of SpaceX. And he's saying, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, it's they cute what things. they're doing, but it's not exciting. It's not cutting edge. Yes. Mm. You know? For, <clears throat> In that term. When he said that, it just reminded me of the whole Tesla thing. It's just the amazing marketing of Elon Musk. In terms of the technology not being new, but him yes. packaging it. Like him way. saying we're sending people to Mars. Okay, who's paying for it? I don't know, the Martians. Who's going to cover it for you? You're not going to pay out of pocket. I don't think that's realistic. Personally, I don't think that's a realistic thing, sending people to Mars. Yes, maybe they will be able to do it sometime down the line, but I don't think it's it's viable long-term. You know, Mars What do you say long-term, like, like 15, 20 years? Then, when you send people to Mars, what are you expecting? Are you expecting them to live there? What are you expecting? Are they going and coming back? What's, what is the mandate here? You, so, would, you would imagine eventually people would expand civilization to other planets. You could terraform Mars, whatever that means. 
Yeah, but there's nothing in any other planet that offers what Earth offers. And we, okay. you, could, you could basically, uh, I don't know, transform it into a little planet. Truth. That's, yeah, that's, through generations. That's, 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 Oof, that's a long time. Sci-fi is cute because that's what sci-fi sells. You're yes. cute. Yeah, and, that, and honestly, that's, that's, what I, that, no, no, that's why I love the genre because it allows you to expand your sphere of imagination to that level. Sphere. But when it comes to the reality of it, the actual effort it would need for you to do something on that scale. And the technology. And the technology is, is indescribably complex and difficult. And like we are nowhere near that level of sophistication to be able to do something like that. You know? The level of cooperation actually you would need yeah. is nigh unattainable. Yeah, and, and you go back to looking at where we are in terms of space. And that's actually a very good point that you mentioned that we or the US made it to space because, hey, I'm competing with someone and this is, you know, a war of ideology, a war of, you know, existential, you know, existence and all of that. But once that was over, there's no other driver for you to go back to space. The only thing that is driving you now or is driving SpaceX is, hey, I can sell this service to the US. You know, I can actually make some money off of it and make it a profit. You know, very capitalistic logic. But in terms of what's actually happening, I think what China is doing is interesting because it's building its national prestige using that, I guess. Like, I think the other side of SpaceX also is it's backed by the U.S. government, which means if the U.S. government wants to launch something, it doesn't need to rely on NASA. It can make it top secret. Hey, we have this thing that we want to launch. It's a satellite. None of your business what it does. Mm. And SpaceX will say, okay, we'll take it. I see, again, there you go. Satellites, have, we've been doing that since the 60s. That's yes. not new. Like there's... We keep releasing new ones with newer technologies. And like, ignoring the old one. You remember, you remember when I told you about that whole space satellite concept, uh, solar satellite concept? Remember that? Uh, how far back was that? So when I was when I was back in school, I remember doing a research paper about the idea of a solar powered satellite, which is basically a satellite that you pit in space that takes solar power and transmits it to Earth. It's a it's a different way of making you know energy from the sun. It's much more efficient because. You're getting, you know, you're not getting the the interference that's happening between the Earth's atmosphere and the sun rays when it comes. So that idea has been conceptualized in the 70s, and it, I think Japan tried to do that in the early 2010s. But what I'm saying is, the ideas that we thought of back then we couldn't bring to life now. Mm. You know, that's how far we are from really doing stuff in space because there is no motive. That goes there. The profit movement the move there's, doesn't There's no exist. profit, and the challenges are, and the risks are way higher yeah. than actually anything else. So, again, yeah, I was saying again, when you look at, <laughs> he, that's what SpaceX is supposed to be. He's a This is a job. This is a job. Yeah, the rest is on you, bro. The space elevator. Yeah. We're going to get back our equipment. You know, we're going to get it ready for the next guy who wants to go up. But that's our job here. Something that people have been able to do since the 30s. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah. Anyway, off to other things. Off to other things. Really? I mean, space is fun. Space is always, <laughs> let's talk about space more. No, actually, yeah. Apple re- released this uh, study that I thought was very interesting. They're saying that large language models, basically all the AI, open AI that we have. Chat, GBTs. And all that, cannot reason. And when it comes to reasoning, mm-hmm. they fail. Interesting and a huge failure at that also. So they got, they put this question out. So philosophy. Said, okay. So they fun. were like, okay. So well, you, you you would ask it this question. You would say, Shamsi has eight apples, mm. right? Mm. Shamsi sold three apples. Shamsi made this much out of those apples, and they just put the question like that, and they'll be able to find an answer for it. Mm. But if you say the same question and then you add, but Shamsi made less money last year by 10%, it will add that into the equation, not knowing that it has nothing to do with the whole sentence up there. Okay. Mm. And they figured out that every time they did that, they found it to be slower and come up with the correct answer. And I think it dropped like 30 to 60% in some of them. Okay. So whenever you add reason into a question, it loses how it's supposed to answer you the right, uh, the right way because it doesn't know that that's reason. You know, it's like when you asked me, Yo, so yesterday I went to the barber, but uh, by the way, I got new shoes. But the barber, I paid 20 to add. They, they're adding the new shoes to the equation. So they're not recognizing the nuance of different elements of speech and being able to exactly. integrate them properly. Um, that, I think that's something that will be resolved in time. I don't think so. But I think that also shows... You can't code reason. I think, yeah. <laughs> you can't code no, reason. I, no, no, I think that 
if anything, that just proves the complexity of the human mind and like and and how how it is put together in a way that like you are trying to replicate now in in different ways and you're failing. You know, and the reason I think is one of the most basic things that you can really work on. So if I ask ChatGPT, would you still love me as I was, if I was a worm? It wouldn't be able to answer me. Nope. It will love a worm though. <laughs> no, but it's, 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 it will spe- love you. It speaks basically to like, yes, you have access to all of this different information, right? And this is like when you look at it in terms of your own brain and your own head, you have access to all this different information. The difference between you and the large language model is there are billions of connections between those different you know, factoids in your head that you are able to activate at a, at a split second to be able to reason and figure out something from large amounts of information and analyze and do all of that. You still don't have that capacity when it comes to these mm. large language models. I don't think you'd be able to get that capacity. Yeah, exactly. Like, will you be able to get, like quantum computing, when we get to that level, I think, yes, you will be able to program that kind of thing. Because at our current scale, yeah, I think we gotta... I think even with quantum computing, I think it's gonna be very yeah. difficult. No, no, but it, it, I don't think you will take a leapfrog if you ahead. Can, if you can program satire, <laughs> then all this is gonna be different. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy you can program setup. satire. That's crazy. It is. See what I mean? Yeah. So I think there, there's always gonna be a limit. You know, I, I, I don't think but it's gonna be where it's, it's gonna be. It's fun. It's fun to be able to, I mean, it's still the, like the, the, the mimicry of, of, of intelligence behind it is interesting. So you know? we're, we're going to get like ChatGPT going, Intel processors be like this, NVIDIA processors be like that. Exactly. That'd be fucking hilarious, by yeah, the way. Original stand-up comedy from an AI. I would pay you for that, oh, my guy. God. What are you talking about? I would pay you for that. Did, <laughs> did you hear? <laughs> I hate this guy. Did you hear about that live stream that was basically an AI that was fed every single script of Seinfeld and they had like coded the models to play out random AI episode of Seinfeld and it was like on a live stream but they pulled it off because the the episode got really really racist really really quickly so it would just take different clips and just make its own episode no 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 like they would just feed it into the model itself and say play an episode uh, uh, develop an episode of Seinfeld and every single time, it, it, it's, it, it, it went really racist. Yeah, see, once again, nuance. And like, it's not the first time. It happened so many times before. It happened with Microsoft. Remember when they did their uh, their bot? It was on, it was yeah, on, on Twitter? Tw- on Twitter. Yeah, and then it became racist real quick. But fair enough, that was it was fed by users. So it was that was an incident of trolling. Well, isn't that all of, uh, what's the long language uh, model? Bro, you can't program culture. Oh, my God. You don't, I don't think you, and he, you said it, you can't program satire, you can't program culture either. Like you can't, as much as you can put stuff into words, there's going to be a lot of times and a lot of things that are too, like, you know, granular for you to be able to, you know, like it's like all these little ticks of different people and different societies and but how they engage you, and how you, they interact. You can't program all You of that. can program bias. Remember that like yes. when, Google, mm. when Google launched that uh, yeah. AI imaging model, and it hated white people for some reason. You know, you know I think the, the programming like, bias for, comes for, from... For the, for the benefits of listeners, this was, I think it's called Genesis or something. Yes. If you asked it to, uh, and I'm using a, an actual example, to show you a picture of, an, of a 16th century Scottish nobleman, it would show you uh, a person of color. And like, okay, diversity is all well and good, but I don't think there were... <laughs> <laughs> there were Hispanic Scotsman in the 16th century. I wish I had. Hispanic Scotsman. <laughs> yeah, no, but th- again, that, that's 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 all just a product of of people's own prejudices, and that is something that you can't. It's hard to extract from people, right? That's why that's why they 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 promote the idea of having diverse coding teams, for example, to be able to at least get different points of views into the product before it goes out. I think all these like uh, language models. I look at it as the English language. That's what it's going to be. Because in terms of languages, the English language is like the most basic thing. I mean, comparable to to anything uh, else, to Chinese, to Arabic, to you know exactly a whole Chinese, bunch of Arabic. All of them Parsi. have very, a lot of depth into them, mm. right? And English is just basic, basic. And I think these are are, are going to be basic. So it's not going to be like yo, we're really going to look and I think them selling us the idea that hey, with all these. Uh, language models that your life is going to be different you're going to have your own servant la 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 and people looked at it like yo it's as if I'm talking to another human 
No, it's just going to be like what Siri is. You know, he's going to ask a questions when you need to ask a questions. You're going to uh, have it do things for you much quicker when it comes to setting up appointments or But whatever. That is, that is or an, ordering something. That is an evolution in your own level of convenience, right? Like, okay, we're talking about the difference between you having, you know, internet and then having internet with Google. See the level of jump between those two. There's two different worlds that you experience, and I think ChatGPT. I don't think it's even that big. I think I think it has that capacity, that potential you, uh, to be your it's own. It's Google without typing. No, no, but in terms of it being your own personal, like being able to use it to book appointments, being able to use it to 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 you know, there's a lot of different ways that it can enhance your life. Be your own personal assistant that can make your life better. But is it going to be able to be a person that you can talk to? No, that's that's. That's the Turing test. Yeah, that's that's a whole different level of. I think that's what they were selling it to us. The the sell was, yo, you're gonna have this person that that will take care of everything for you. Soon he's, he's gonna be in a robot that can walk and do things for you. So I think them selling that put that image in people's head that it's gonna be this 100% thing. It's gonna take over every single little thing. I don't think. I, I just think it's a, it's a it's. You don't think we can get there? I think it's very yeah. difficult to get there. And okay, not in terms of it talking to you like an actual person okay but mimicking you know the you know the the, the movements and the nuances of speech of a person you know i think it already, doesn't it already do that i think it already does that with your big ass head over there hey big head yes sir i'm glad that you know it's you ask him the question again. like you know in terms of has the turing test been been passed i mean there was like this weird guy who used to work at google he's and he said The AI model and his. Uh, oh, the dude that got fired. Yeah, the guy who looked like a wizard. Mm. <laughs> just, just for reference, the, the Turing test is basically a test that Alan Turing, one of the early pioneers of computers, came up with, which is basically: can you have a conversation with a machine in which you couldn't tell that it was a machine? Like you can, ha- you can stay as long as you need to having that conversation, but if you can't tell effectively if it's a machine or not, then you've passed the Turing test. And that's one of the tests that I think AI engineers are looking. Remember, Google did that a while ago. For the restaurants, yeah. Remember, you call, but that's different. That's different. but it's very close to yeah, it. Yeah, that's different. You call and the it's very specific to a restaurant and that's, a specific and, menu. And that's where and that's where I think these models would come into handy. Being able to become your own personal, like I see it now, how people use them in in how they study and how they work. It's it just saves you so much time and it saves you so much energy. Yeah, being, it's it just thinks talk, for you. It's a, it doesn't think for you. It's a talking Google. Mm. That's all it is. It consolidates all this information and tries to give you the best information that it knows it's 100%, puts it together and gives you a resolution to your question, right? But it's not 100% in any way, shape or form. Yes, it has mistakes, but like, I, the efficiency of it nonetheless. I'd rather Google because then I will know what's the website, right? I know like, I don't need to go read something and figure out what the source is. Mm. I know already what the source is. I know what information I'm getting it from and how this information is being transmitted to me. But if I take it from this thing that just collecting information and telling me oh, these these are the sources, but this is what I came up with. Oh, okay. Footnotes, footnotes don't matter. Footnotes don't matter. <laughs> Why are you exactly. give me your conclusion? Believe, I need to come up with a conclusion. Believe, myself. Me. Uh, believe, my, believe my, this is what Chachi is telling you. Footnotes don't matter. Believe me. I didn't believe this is what ChatGPT is telling you. Believe me. My fear is that once this becomes widespread, there is going to be an epidemic of mafat. You remember. When the Google's introduced football is happening, yeah, yes, football classical, yeah, but it should have been up for zero right now. Matic, matic, oh, anyway. when, when Google introduced the option of adding AI answers to your search questions, mm-hmm. and you would ask it, like, How do I get creamy mashed potatoes? and the AI suggestion would be like, Add some glue to your mashed potatoes. Well, yeah, that's that's I think, I think that's a very, very possible issue, I think, and that's. That's much more of an insidious problem than people would realize because at some point you will trust these 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 softwares, these programs, right? And if at any point there's a bug, you know, people wouldn't be able I to mean, tell the difference. You, you right? would tell it, how do you wash your, your chicken when you get it from the grocery store? And you would add... And would, people are dumb enough to do what the fuck it says. Yeah, and do it like... That's the problem. Yeah, and, and I think that's a real problem. I think that's that's a genuine real issue. But again, like when you ask Google to how do I clean and wash my chicken and the AI suggests put some cleaning detergent on it, like that's a you problem if you believe that. <laughs> I mean, listen, you are supposed to be correct. I am. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing, right? This is why I'm coming to you. This is why I'm using your service. And that's where the danger lies, being able to trust something that doesn't think or doesn't feel 
or doesn't see. Well, that's when you market it to all these young kids, telling them, yo, this will save you a lot of time, save you everything. That's what they're all going to believe. They're going to believe any answer they get out of it. I don't need to. Bro, it's the same with this new generation, right? Because they have Google in the palm of their hand, right? And TikTok and all these social media and, and they get getting bombarded with all sorts of information. And disinformation. Yeah. So they talk to you like, yo, what they know is like, it's the real thing. Right? Oh, no, I know these things. I don't need no one telling me. I don't need this to no adult to give me no direction because I know the information I'm getting. How do you know who's giving you that information? It's giving you a toilet. It's giving you information. <laughs> exactly. What is that? What is that? Actually? It's called brain rot. Don't, don't look it up. <laughs> like, it, doesn't, know, it doesn't make sense. I, I keep seeing this term and I'm like, what the fuck is going on, bro? No, you don't. You don't. You don't. That's the thing. You don't. And Yeah, and, and you need to teach them that, yo, this is not real. None of this is real. I mean, Ooh. it is in terms of their experience, but it's not real in terms of again. Yeah, I love to, it's real in terms of their experience because that's that's the reality they're living in. Added this information appears real. It's it's what's the truth? Truthiness. There's I mean, a very I mean, high percentage just, of truthiness. I, look, I still cannot believe that people take other people on social media seriously when they have like no followers and a fake picture. Because I need to respond to your shitty opinion. <laughs> like, no, uh, I need to let you know what's on my mind. Fine, you're not responding. What's even worse than them are the people that take those tweets as like, you know, a word from God. Well, give an example. No, and some people really buy into the hype. Right? Okay. And so they are very affected by the, the, he, the wisdom, he, he brought supposed it up, wisdom. He, of the he brought it up because obviously he saw something. No, no there's so many things that I saw. So, uh, like, especially since like all these wars are happening around us. I've been a lot on social media, watching what's happening, reading news and stuff like that. And then I always like, when I bump into something and I know it's a setup, I just go to the comments, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And like, you'll see how these people are feeling. And then I look at the comments, I'm like, bro, you guys like have a lot of energy yeah. toward this random dude with a fake picture. Bro, mob mentality is very easy to stoke. I know? mean, and hatred is very easy to, to wipe up, you know? So it's not. I mean, uh, with Twitter, again, with it's the Twitter, misinformation. With Twitter, exactly, since Elon Musk got it up, like, engagement bait has been crazy. Yeah, that's for them. For us, it's been happening for a long, long time. All these people that came to be like, all these people will have a picture of the Saudi flag, right? And act like they're Saudis. Mm. And then they'll start responding and like and using like, they'll, they'll talk shit to like any Arab people in the region, right? Oh, we're superior to you and so on. So those people are like, oh yeah, fuck Saudi, mm. right? He's not real, bro. <laughs> the dude is, the doesn't exist. He's not real. He has no profile picture. He has no location. He has like two followers. Have you not heard my opinion, Adil? What are you talking <laughs> about? Like my opinion. Again, you need to hear my opinion, bro. I just find it very ridiculous how people still fall for it. Like, especially like, like this morning. Let's, let's get into the region for a minute, right? Please. There's nothing new in the region about wars. So, Israel finally struck it on. You mean the ballet dance? Yeah. What? What's going on? You can hear about it. Exactly. Yeah, ex exactly. Okay. This morning, they hit multiple military sites in Iran. Over 12 okay. hours. Okay. This morning? This morning, yes. It okay. finished at 6 a.m. Okay. And okay. And they helped, they basically, they said, oh, we just hit some military targets, some weapon uh, bullshit company, some, it's bullshit. Like the, like, and then it's, what? That's it. It's a okay. dance, bro. It's the same fucking dance that Iran did to Saudi Arabia doing to Iran. And so people, the reason I'm telling you this is because one of the things that made me laugh so fucking hard is this guy is saying, oh, see, because Saudi came out and they said you would condemn all this attack on Iran from Israel. Mm. And then someone put, oh, it's all part of the play. Saudi is actually like, you know, aligned with Israel for this. And then like the tweet right after is saying, oh, it's part of the play. Israel and Iran aligned for this. And then the, the third tweet, there's a guy that's like, oh, the US uh, stopped Israel from killing Iran. I'm like, yo, someone have an opinion here. Yeah, everybody has an someone opinion. Someone right? have an opinion that actually makes sense. Everybody's just lying. It's, it's called Abhat al mustafid Mm. Exactly. And so, like, when I look at that, and what kills me, like, I'll, I'll watch like some things, like, like you know, some of our, my boys are sending groups and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, this is not real, y'all. Like, right now, like a lot of people in our age demographic became like our mothers and with WhatsApp groups, mm. just sending you random shit. Oh my God, al Fatih, you know, like that kind of stuff. Mm. So it became that. Like you're sending me something that's a bunch of bullshit. Like there's things that people can't believe that's actually generated. That is not real. And people don't understand that the idea that some people thrive off creating this, 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 you know, the, the hate and the chaos and, and the confusion. And they're called trolls. They, they exist for 
their own satisfaction and to literally some of them no no let's be no. honest some, so of, some of them are not, state actors no, exactly and some of them exactly. are directed and exactly. that's part of the play as well you know confusion when you don't know what's real and what's not that's when i can sell you whatever the fuck i want because you can't tell the difference at this point i think one of the reasons why the arab spring failed in our region is because i think the actors behind the arab spring like we know who they are mm. <laughs> right they did not understand that we do not take social media seriously. Like we would be one personality on social media and in real life we'd be a totally different person. Mm. Correct. So the misinformation that they were putting on Saudi the whole time, it never really penetrated. Because we just looked at it as, no, this is just the internet. This is where it exists. Mm. This is not our reality. And I think we're one of the very few countries that... Like China had to go to the extent of closing off social media away from the world mm. for them to protect misinformation. We didn't need to do that. We're still connected to the world, but we can find the bullshit. Mm. And I think it's like one of the greatest assets that we have because we, we still, compared to the rest of the world, we still have a reality outside. Yeah, and we have, we have trust in our own selves in terms no, of our own we system. have culture. Yeah. We still meet our relatives. We have neighbors. Like, you, it's... It, you, okay, or, I want to say this in the right way so I don't hurt a lot of people's feelings, but fuck everyone. We are a society. No, what I'm saying is you choose to be lonely in Saudi. Mm. Yes. It's not something that you become lonely in Saudi. You choose to be lonely in Saudi. It's a choice. Because in our culture, you will always have your cousins. You'll always have your uncles and your aunts. Even if you visit them once in 10 years, they'll still open the doors for you. You'll still have your neighbors. You'll still have people around you that you can be with. You choose to be alone. Abroad, you're already told to be alone since you're 18. You're encouraged, actually. Exactly. Go take care of yourself. Go build relationships. Do whatever. Live your life. They tell you all this thing. They, they put you out on your own from the beginning. So what happens? You go out and you grow. And you forget about everything in your past. Mm. Right? Because you're changing every now and then. You're meeting new people. You have a new personality. You have blah, blah, blah. But for us... We have a reality check that's called family, mm. that's called neighbors, that's called the, your neighborhood mosque. Mm. So we have those institutions that we can go back to even if we need help. And even if it comes, worse comes to worse, we have a government that we can go back to if we need help for something, right? Even if it's medical, whatever it is, we have somewhere to go. A lot of places outside do not have places to go. It's, I'm here, this is what life is, and there's nothing to give me anything on it, right? There's no pluses. On there's it. nothing I can rely on. There's nothing I can there's nothing, connect that's, to. There's nothing that's meaningful to me. Mm. You know, there's nothing for me to connect to and feel like I'm a part of. And like I had this conversation with one of my friends. I'm not going to tell you where he's from, but he was like... The global north. <laughs> he's like, there was a picture of someone waving the flag. And I was like, why aren't you waving your flag? He was like, it's like I don't have nothing to identify from where I'm at. Mm. I have like zero to identify with. It's like the policies, the politics, the way things are run, like all this, like I, I can't identify with this. I don't know why am I raising a flag. And you do get to that point when you feel like you're helpless and there's no one around you. There's not even someone that supports you and there's no one that governs you or governs the people around you. There's nothing to root you. I think that's part of the main issue here that a lot of what you're describing seems to me again, coming for the problem of not having a connection with the past and thus a connection that you can build with the future. Yeah, it's a lot of these societies when they present you with the, I like to call the illusion of freedom. Be it like do whatever you want, associate to whatever you want with, you are your- Build your own self. Whatever, find your own family, etc. You have no base with which to work off of, nothing based in like culture, heritage, religion, etc. Family. Family. A lot of people like in these societies like are doing the nine to five grind and just like feel utterly meaningless in their day-to-day -day lives. This like, is where video games come in to fill in the void and other, you know, stimulants I mean, and again, like, options. The reason why we make a joke is that the epidemic of loneliness is a white people problem, mm -hmm. is it because it is. It's 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 a it's a it's a symptom, I think, of the modern society and and the values that it champions. And I think what we're talking about here is the fact that we are blessed to have something different that we value, which is that, as we said, we are, you know, that's a, as I started off, we 
our community and our, the people around us and the connections that we have and the networks that we are born with, that we grow with, that we live with, are things that really come together to build that society. And football, that football just happened. Yes, yeah, so Bobby's going to go. Fuck it. In a really good way. <laughs> yeah, that was a good goal. But sorry, yeah. keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I know it's it's like little things that come together to build the big picture. And once those little things no longer have reasons to connect to each other, then that big picture becomes very muddled. I think that's that's really the the root of it and the core of it. And social media is one of those things that muddles things, right? Because it allows everyone to have a voice and allows everybody to amplify everybody else. And there are, and 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 it thrives off of negativity much 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 more it, than it, it does it, off I would positivity. Also, I would also add it allows people who shouldn't have a community to have a community. <laughs> yeah, it, it allows a whole lot of weird shit to go on, honestly. Exactly. You know. And and that's if, and that's part of it. Isn't that part of the illusion? I, I mean, I you mean, are free to t- talk about and do and nice you're free to talk about and do and 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 create as you as you desire I so mean, go go forth young one I, I mean if you're steve in nebraska and you farm potatoes but you really like transformers fan fiction mm. you don't cre- th- don't you, create potato no, based no, transformers but, no but if you lived there without the internet you would think you're the only person in the world who really likes transformers fan fiction mm. but with the internet you, th- you now know there's a lot of weirdos like you And those are becoming your substitute family, which is a bad thing. Was it offside? No. I think it was offside. I don't think so. It doesn't matter. No. But what you said is something very interesting. Do you know why? Why? Because the one thing that we never had, I never had some random politician that I've never heard of in my life get up and tell me what my culture is. I never had this random politician come to me and saying what our values is. We already know what our values are. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. You have something that rooted you. To those values, and that's something that that something is something that you will pass along, you know, whether it's to your future children, whether it's to to the people around you, like it, you, you that network exchange still happens. I mean, bullshit. That's bullshit. I mean, that's bullshit. we see it in every American election cycle. Like, if you were a united country, you wouldn't be completely and utterly divided on every single social issue. No, they are united in the right to bear arms. You know, there are things that they are united on. You know, really? They though? are united on on the Holding right. Holding a weapon. <laughs> exactly. They are united on the right to ha- col- you, colonize and, and dominate other have nations you seen the discussions as a hegemon around, of have, the world Have order. you seen the discussion around gun rights and the internet? At the moment, I have not been seeing any discussions, I mean, thankfully. I mean, the discussion is that, can you please have one automatic weapon. I'm like, no, I want all the automatic weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't I right? I don't have a right to bear arms. Let me bear arms, bro. No, look, when you come out and telling us, oh, this is a human rights issue because you decided. Wait, wait, what was that? What was that? Human rights? What is, what is yeah, it's, that? It's this thing that what like that? back in the day the uh, Americans used to thrive on. Uh, and it was this thing that was like, yo, it's very important for the world and humans, mm. right? So we will be the people to lead the human rights. Oh, yeah. But they lost it on October 7th in oh, 2023. Okay. They okay. lost all of that. Uh, I would argue, the day human rights died. Yeah, I would argue it was lost a long, long time no, before that's, that. No, that's no. for you because you, you were basically... I don't know, you have a brain aware yeah. and a culture yeah. and yeah. you understand uh, politics. Mm-hmm. But for the normal idiot, did not understand that this was a play. For the normies. Yes, the normies. The normies. <laughs> the normies. The normies. Okay. So yeah, it was this thing that they lost a long time ago. They'll never get it back no matter what they do. It's called a charade. Charade. Yes. Charade. So I, now... For I, once, that's a correct pronunciation. I don't need anyone to get up on TV and tell me how to feel mm. and what to feel. I don't, I don't need that. I have bigger issues at play of how to solve bigger issues that... I need to solve for myself, for my country, and for my people, and for the greater good of the people, right? Mm. So I don't need to wake up and tell you, oh, today we're caring about, you know, dissecting kids because it's important. Do you remember during COVID when pedos was coming up on the rise and some people were trying to give them rights? Mm. Do you remember that? I remember that. I did not forget that. They're, they're called, they call themselves minor attracted persons. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. And some, What a disturbing exactly. fucking term. This, this was happening during COVID. What a fucked up way of yes. describing a fucking sexual predator. So also. when you don't have any cultural values, if you don't have any of that, you become lonely because you're always trying to find something to attach yourself to. I have a friend of mine who lives in the States, right? And he has, so far, I've known him since we were, I think, like 10 years old. And the whole time, He had, I think, a good amount of like six to seven different personalities. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he would attach himself to that personality and become that personality and become that thing that he's working on. 
And every time like I talk to him, I'm like, yo, but you used to like, no, no, that was the old me. Did he have a vegan face? He reinvented yes, himself. Did. did he have a potato transformer face? No, no, he didn't have that one. Okay. But I find him just throwing himself into things and having every now and then when I like when he posts when I talk to him, it's always these new faces that none of us have ever seen before. And it's this new thing that he's standing up for or he believes in. And it just it contradicts everything that who he is. He's just jumping on bandwagons, trying to find attachment to something. The keyword here is trying, Adel. He is trying to find me. So it's not the bandwagon. No, part, no, no. It's, it's him just trying. No, no. It's it's like it's actually a sad thing to see. And when you describe it that way, it's 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 genuinely sad because he's genuinely trying to find meaning. It's it's you know? like when I see like the the college debates and like protesting for Palestine and Gaza, I like good intentions, but like a bunch of adult children are going to, going every day and looking to the mirror and saying. Hmm, this international conflict, how can I make it about me? Because your feelings are hurt. I know, how can I make it about me? Your feelings are valid. I support one. Palestine, but what about me? How 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 is this a, a demonstration of me being a good person? Uh, do you think the idea of universal values is something that will ever take actual root? No. No. We can't agree on nothing. Like, we will never get to a point where we say, yo, guys, this is, let's say, let, let's just agree on these 10 things. No. You know? agree on nothing no i feel like we can agree on two of them at least right now okay so you're telling me that we need not even that actually you're telling me that Australia needs security right when all of the arab countries they come together go to the un and say hey we're all here willing to find a solution to this we have a solution just have them stop what they're doing and come and sit down and discuss and then the whole world just ignores we see that's the thing that's the the fucked up thing is what i was just thinking about i was about to say you know, oh at least we all agree that we shouldn't just kill pe people nope and then i nope, remember nope, oh nope, nope, exactly wait people have been getting killed yes. wantonly and randomly and, new weapons and, every and, single day and nothing is actually changing nothing and nothing is going to change because we will never agree and if you are rooted in islam and you have an understanding how the world is going to end you know that we're never going to be united this kumbaya bullshit will never really exist because we're always going to be divided and it gets to the point that we're going to start killing each other. And at the end of time, we're going to be killing each other. I mean, I feel like if there's one thing we're going to add, add to this, killing each other. Yes. Like that's one thing and that's humans, exactly what we're going to do. That's one thing humans We're never going to be yo, all one arm just holding each other. We are the world. No, no, no. That's not going to happen. That's not going to exist. Let's stop lying to each other. Let's have a better reality where we respect each other's boundaries and everyone does whatever the fuck they need to do in their own place. Oh, it's my own business. That's all we can do. Other than that, every single superpower is going to say, hey, this is how the world should run. And that's how it's been happening. And even with that being the biggest superpower and controlling the logistics, controlling the sea, controlling the air, controlling the internet, with all of that, you still can't get people to agree on anything. But pronouns, though. <laughs> They're important. Pronouns are important. Hey, this is this is the reality of where we live in. Let's not lie to each other. Let's just accept the fact that nothing's going to be good, <laughs> right? And just try to find solutions to make it okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. not great, just okay. That's the capstone where positivity comes to die. <laughs> so, you know, this is the vision of the world we present to you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, I, I told you, we still can. We will <laughs> plant hate in your name. Yeah, Bleak, bleakness is what we <laughs> is what we promote. Do you see why we laugh and we joke? Because we have actually accepted the reality of the world that we live in. Yes. The one thing... This is why we laugh and joke. I, because okay. it, it it allows us to kind of... Uh, like, I want to say this, but I really hope... Like, I, I really want to say it in, the, in a nice way. Yeah, because it's about us, right? And I don't know how it's going to come out. So I really hope it doesn't come out too negative or too stupid. But we're watching what's happening right now as awful as it is in our region, cleansing ourselves from religious politics is super important. And I think this is what we're seeing happening because I need to choose my words carefully. Iran, <laughs> this is me choosing it carefully, right? Weaponized our religion. Correct. Right? We're watching other Muslims dying and killing themselves also for Iran for Iran in the name of Iran Iran's army is vibing their people are sitting back I'm not going to say they're vibing either because I don't know how they're living 
No, but the army is vibing. They're eating kebabs, hamashia. Exactly. They're negotiating with the states on new deals while using Arabs to kill everybody else. And the only thing that can ever tie us to Iran is religion. Nothing else can tie us. Not culture, not values, nothing. Only religion. And they weaponized it in a way that they made Muslims feel like it's okay to kill other Muslims. Even if they had nothing to do with what's going on. Look at my turban. It's black. Listen to me. Look at what uh, Nasrallah did for, what's his name? Hezbollah did all of them. What they did against Syria. They didn't care that those people were Muslims. Look what they did in Iraq. They didn't care that they were Muslims. They didn't care that they were innocent people. They didn't care. Yeah. I mean, push, so you weaponize religion. And, and right now we're watching this getting cleansed. And when push came to shove, your boys left you hanging. Yes. Because they didn't care. Exactly. They're just weaponizing religion for their own incentives. This has more to do about economy than religion. And this is and that is politics in a nutshell, unfortunately. Being looking for men al mustafid is one part of it, but it's also people being used as pawns and tools basically to serve other people's ends, unfortunately. But using it in the name of religion. And that's 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 that is the twisted part of it. Yeah, and we already got rid of the ideologies of Al Qaeda and everybody else. And we're like, okay, thank God, we're, we're breathing a little bit. All of a sudden, we get this huge shift. No, but say the radicalism that happened was started way like the the the, the Iran radicalism started way before the Qaeda radicalism. You know that ideology and that weaponization of yeah, it. They were they were around they were around the same time. Yeah, just different flavors of the same bullshit. Someone gave Iraq to Iran. I wonder who that was. Americans. Yeah. Uh, we, need to discuss it. Like, <laughs> we all know yeah, it. Like the history books exist. Right? Yeah, not that they did, you know, not that loud. Not that loud. Mission accomplished, yeah. even though nothing was accomplished to this day. But anyway, like you handed it over. You handed over the region to them. Obama handed over the region to them. We just saw documents that were leaked from the US given to Iran about the preparations for Israel. Hey, 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 listen, listen. We can't deal with this. Y'all want this? Take it. So, like, take it. Anyway. That's the only thing that they have against us. That's the only thing. The only thing that got them to do anything inside the GCC was using religion. When it was Iran in Mecca, when it was Iran pumping up the Shias in Bahrain, and it was all from them, all because of them. And so, right now, with the way everybody is moving and pushing religion away from politics, so people don't weaponize religion, is something that we need. I don't even know how long it's going to last. I think it's going to take some time. I think I think the, the horrors of that weaponization have been shown to be quite clearly. I think we've seen the hor- those horrors play out over a long span of time. And I think at this point, people are just sick of having to put up with the same it's thing. It's damaging again, again. to it's damaging to religion itself. Yes. If yeah. I if I let's say I uh, it's it's it's, the, it's one of the main sources of instability. In no, the it's region. damaging for religion itself. Like if let's say if I am a young person who is bought into this package deal of religion and politics and I believe in my religion and I believe that th- sowing this political instability is ultimately to our benefit but when he sees that this instability is ruining his life the life of his family the life of his ho- home and community it doesn't take an extra step to say mm, okay I'm not too hot on this religion thing either oh, and, and, and it's, it's because you- there is no alternative in a lot of these cases like if you go to the south of Lebanon, there is no alternative to religion that isn't Iranified. Yeah. So a lot of people would either step away from religion altogether or have hostility towards it at the end of the day, which is, doesn't help either. Or end up with a twisted version. And the 20 years of them, 30 years of like brainwashing everyone there saying, oh, we have all these missiles, we will kill Israel, we will... Like using Palestine as an excuse. Shema. You know? Just to get sympathy off of other Muslims, say, hey, even though you might not like me, but we're doing this for the same reason. It's not even sympathy, bro. You are you have brainwashed and manipulated entire generations basically into believing the bullshit lie that hey, we will you know we will come back and we will fight back, and at the end of the day, we're looking at what's happening right now. Yeah, like, this is the moment. This is the moment. This Cleaned is them the out moment. in a week. Yeah, this Tur- is the moment. T- and then turn- you're seeing- turns out the road to Palestine didn't pass through Syria; it passed through Palestine. You idiots. Yeah, yeah. And and that's and that's that's the, that's the, really the tragedy in it, like the no, fact that you still see it happen. They don't care about Palestine. Let's not lie to each other here. They never cared in any way, shape, or form. They never did. It was just a messaging. That's it. Yeah, it's a, it's like. A, 
a pacifier more than anything. And oh, don't look at our shit. We're just doing it for the, for the cause. Yeah. It's just another manifestation. Of you can't state. tell me that you hate, oh, I hate America. I hate Israel. And then you sit down and you have conversations with them. No, no. it's it's, it's And try to come with a joint deal. I think it's the same manifestation of the disease that the Arab world has been living in for almost 100 years at this point, since the creation of Israel. It's just you're looking at a different phase and a different version of it. And that's the other point that other people don't even talk about. Like, like since, all this does feed this, right? Yeah, since, all this feeds them. And since the 40s, you know, Arab politicians of different colors and stripes and, and, and creeds have all come together to corrupt, you know, the political system in one way to the other to serve their needs using Palestine as an excuse. And this is just another version of that trend. Hasbillah, <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. وحفظنا وحفظ اخواننا امين يا رب ويسلمهم ان شاء الله الدجالين we haven't done this in a while i know <laughs> yeah because this way we never said anything pass the cap so we're happiness <laughs> doesn't exist <laughs> we're happy just happiness you know stop dancing everyone stop dancing ain't got no groove allah is in Shout out to our tens and tens of listeners. Shout out to tens and tens Thanks. of viewers. Hello. Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> 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 you can get out to uh, our we, we had one more topic about the Old Fashion Week, but I will just save it to next week because mm. the champion is not going to be here, so I can annoy Turks with it. Actually, I'm not going to be late next week. Yay. Uh, if we cannot hold CEOs accountable, then who are we supposed to hold accountable? That's all I'm saying. Mm. Bars. Spicy. All right. Peace. Facts. Bye, 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 bye. Peace. Peace.